Welcome back to the Fulton County Gospel News Podcast. My name is Barry O'Dell, and I am your host. Fulton County Gospel News is a bi-monthly publication of The Church of Christ in Mammoth Spring, Arkansas. If you'd be interested in receiving this paper, you can receive it in your email as a PDF format, or you can receive it in the mail through the United States Postal Service. Either way, it's free of charge. We also offer bundles that can go out to congregations, so you could get a bundle of of five to, oh, I guess I suppose 50 papers that could be handed out at your congregation. And again, that would be free of charge. All of our contact information is on our website. Get a hold of us, and we'll be more than happy to add you to our mailing list. I want to talk to you today for just a few minutes about a Pledge of Allegiance. I would say as United States citizens, we're all thinking the same thing at the moment. Pledge of Allegiance. Well, I want to define those terms real quick, but I want to take it in a different direction. I'm not talking about our country. So when you make a pledge, you're making a solemn promise or undertaking. And when it's a pledge of allegiance, you're promising your loyalty or your commitment to something that is superior to you. It could be an individual, it could be a group, or to a cause. But you are pledging your commitment to that cause, whatever it may be. I've recently been involved in a series of Bible studies with an individual who is of a different religious background, and we've been talking about a variety of things. And I would say, we've only had two studies so far, but I would say we've kind of been laying out the groundwork. It's kind of like two boxers in the first the first round of a fight. They kind of feel each other out and figuring the distance. And that's kind of what we're doing in our couple of first couple of Bible studies is we're, we're kind of... I would say laying some groundwork, getting to know each other personally, while at the same time talking about some biblical concepts. One of the things that I have encountered in this Bible study, I've never really encountered before from the perspective that it's coming, and that is a a devotion on this person's part to the church father's writings of the 2nd, 3rd, 4th century, and really even on up into the time of the Reformers, 15th and 16th centuries. And he often cites those for different beliefs and practices, and my response so far has been always, listen, you're, you're quoting those things, but I'm always going to go back to the Bible. I don't have to cite church historians from the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th century to verify what I believe. I will always return to the Bible. And so in a sense, you've taken, if you're a Christian, you've taken a pledge of allegiance to the Word of God, and that is you've, you've made a solemn promise. You have an undertaking to be loyal or to be committed to to something superior to you, and that is to the inspired Word of God. That's where we always have to go. One passage that I think of is in Matthew chapter 21, when Jesus is being questioned about his authority. One of the things that he says there is, I tell you what, I'll answer a question if you can answer mine. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or from men? Well, they they could either stay quiet, as we know they did, or they could answer one or the other. And so we know that John's baptism was from heaven. The point, the, the, the point I'm making is this. When it comes to faith and practice, the authority is the Word of God. You know, there have been men, intelligent men, Bible students throughout the centuries who have had a lot of wise things to say, have written a lot of good things. I mean, just me, myself, I have a personal library of about 1,600 volumes. And I reference those things in my study. I'll look things up, see what ideas other people have, but I will always come back to the Bible. I will always go to the Word of God. I, I, in a sense, have pledged an allegiance to that. I've made a promise. I, I have an undertaking that my loyalty, my commitment, is to the Word of God, not to the words and thoughts of uninspired men who who happen to have a book out on a particular subject. Anyway, what I want to do is just for a few minutes today lay out several passages of Scripture that present this concept to us that it's it's God's Word that is the final authority. And here's another thing. It can be understood. So many people approach the Bible as if it is nothing more than a book of mysteries, that it's some great religious text that only a certain class of people can understand. And in fact, the Bible tells us the exact opposite. I love Ephesians chapter 3, uh, the first few verses there. Paul tells the Ephesians that when they read what he wrote, they could have his knowledge. They could understand his knowledge in the mystery of Christ. I think part of the problem is in our world is that folks don't take the time to do that, to examine the biblical text, 
to really know what it says, and to put the time and effort that it takes to come to a knowledge of the truth. It doesn't happen by accident. You're not going to become a child of God by accidentally slipping up on the truth. You know, Jesus tells us, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. John chapter 8, verse 32, that is. So here are some passages I just want to read to you and make us think for a few minutes about a pledge of allegiance to the Word of God. We have an undertaking to be loyal, to have a commitment to something that is superior to us, and that is the inspired Word of God. One of the early passages that I think of in the Old Testament is when Balak the Moabite, and this is recorded beginning in Numbers chapter 22, Balak the Moabite sees the Israelites approaching. Israel has been uh, freed from Egyptian captivity. They're wandering on their way to the Promised Land, and they're coming in this region. The king of Moab sees this, and he calls for a man by the name of Balaam, and he wants Balaam, Balak wants Balaam to curse these people. And so, listen to a few verses here. Numbers chapter 22 and verse 18. This is Balaam's response to the request to curse these people. Then Balaam answered and said to the servants of Balak, Though Balak were to give me his house full of silver and gold, I could not go beyond the word of the Lord my God to do less or more. That is an allegiance to God's word. In the same chapter, Numbers chapter 22, verse 38, it says, Balaam said to Balak, Look, I have come to you. Now have I any power at all to say anything? The word that God puts in my mouth, that I must speak. And then one more from this context, Numbers chapter 24 and verse 13. If Balak were to give me his house full of silver and gold, I could not go beyond the word of the Lord to do good or bad of my own will. What the Lord says, that I must speak. You know, if we're going to, be, if we're going to claim to be a follower of Christ... If we're going to claim to be a Christian, that needs to be our mindset. You know, we can. It, it's not wrong to look at ancient documents. It's not wrong to look at commentaries and books and things that can help us along in our study. But when it comes down to it, we must always go back to the Word of God, period. That is the final standard, and the fact of the matter is it can be understood. So that's from Numbers chapters. 23 and 24, you turn over just a few pages to the book of Deuteronomy, and I'm going to Deuteronomy chapter 4, and listen to these first two verses here. Moses speaking, Now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and the judgments which I teach to you to observe, that you may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers is giving you. You shall not add to the word which I command you, nor take from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. That's, you know, that's pretty cut and dry. You don't add to it. You don't take away from it. Again, that's Deuteronomy chapter 4. Now, so the book of Deuteronomy, I'm turning over to Joshua chapter 1, but the book of Deuteronomy is basically Moses' reminders and farewell address before he dies to the children of Israel about what's happened to them historically and what's getting ready to happen to them as they go to the promised land. Well, Joshua then takes over and here's the message to Joshua as he becomes the leader. This is Joshua chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. I love that passage of Scripture. That's so reassuring. And I understand it was written to Joshua under a different, different covenant, under different circumstances. I understand all that. But the principle still applies. If we want to be successful, spiritually speaking, we have to dedicate ourselves. We have to take, in essence, a pledge of allegiance to the Word of God. I'm, I have an undertaking that I'm going to be loyal or committed to something superior to me and its cause. That cause is God's. You know, it's like David, when David came on the scene as Goliath was defying the armies of Israel, one of the things that David said was, is there not a cause? You know, in other words, isn't there something you guys should be standing up for? That's the mindset we need to have. There, there needs to be somewhere that we stand and that's always with the Word of God. So those are three passages from the Old Testament. Let's look. I'm going to look at two from the New. 
the first one, I'm going to go to John chapter 12, and as I'm turning there, I'm going to say this. I suppose most of us has been, have been asked over the years, hey, what's your favorite passage of Scripture? I've always kind of avoided answering that question. Um, I don't like the question, what's my favorite passage of Scripture? I guess I understand the sentiment behind it. You know, I, I suppose a lot of folks would say, well, Psalm 23, you know, it's a very comforting passage. Everybody has a different opinion, but I, I suppose if I were to, you know, if I were pressed to answer this question, I might go to John chapter 12, what I'm getting ready to read to you, beginning in verse 48. He who rejects me and does not receive my words has that which judges him. The word that I have spoken will judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken on my own authority, but the Father who sent me gave me a command, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his command is everlasting life. Therefore, whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me, so I speak. And see, when you understand who is saying that, that that's Jesus Christ, this is God with us, Emmanuel, and, and he himself is saying, I am only going to speak the word of God. In fact, verse 49 there, the first part in the New King James says, For I have not spoken on my own authority. The Greek language actually reads, For I from myself spoke not. Jesus didn't originate this. It originated with the Father. And that's no reflection on the nature of Christ or anything like that. The point we're making is that this is of God. And if we're going to pledge an allegiance... Why not pledge one to God and to His Word? Because that's going to be our standard of judgment. So, I, you know, again, if, if I were pressed to say, what's your favorite passage of Scripture? I just might have to give this one because I see the attitude of, of my Lord towards the revealed Word of God. The final passage I'm going to look at for this episode is in, if I can get there, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. And I'm going to start reading in verse 13. 2 Thessalonians 2:13. Paul writes, But we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth, to which he called you by our gospel for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen to verse 15 here. Therefore, brethren, stand fast. I would say that's a challenge that a lot of people give up on. It takes strength to stand up for what's right. Standing up for what's popular, I guess. Standing up for what's popular, that's that can be pretty easy because typically the crowd's with you. But you know, standing up for what's right is another story. And sometimes you have to stand alone. But his instruction here is, stand fast and hold the traditions which you were taught. Well, tradition, so they can be good or bad. We know there are bad traditions. You can read Matthew 15, you can read Mark chapter 7. But then there are traditions that are good, and these are the inspired traditions, he says, which you have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. In other words, the letters that we wrote to you or while we were there preaching to you. This is an inspired apostle saying this. Hold fast to that. Stand in that. Pledge your allegiance to that. And that's what Christians need to do today. Pledge your allegiance to have an undertaking of loyalty or commitment to something superior to you and its cause. And that's the Word of God for the child of God. We always have to return to Scripture for, for our faith and practice, as we say it sometimes. In other words, for what we believe and what we do. The Word of God is the authority, period, regardless of the amount of books. And again, like I said, I've got my own personal library. But I know where the standard of authority is. It's not with the church. It's not with a set of commentaries uh, or, or anything like that. It is in the Word of God that's inspired by the Holy Spirit, that's been preserved for us, and we have it today. That's where we stand. I appreciate you listening to this episode of the Fulton County Gospel News Podcast. We're on Podbean, Spotify, Google Podcasts. I ask if you would please to su subscribe to one of those, share this content on social media, our goal here at Mammoth Spring is simply this. Go back to the Bible, teach only the Bible, and get God's Word out to as many people as possible in as many different ways as possible. Again, if you're interested in the paper, visit our website, mammothspringchurchofchrist.com. Get a hold of us, and we'll be more than happy to add you to our mailing list. And until the next episode, thanks for listening, and stay in the Word. <music>